Unit 3.6, use matrices to solve system. So the class objective is to represent a system of linear equations with the matrix. In other words, in order to use matrices to solve system, you have to convert a system of linear equations in a matrix form at first. And then we use matrices to solve a system of linear equations. Last time in Unit 3.5, we talked about how to solve a system with three variables. So in this class, we're going to use three variables as well. But instead of using substitution or elimination, we use matrices to solve it. Basically, matrix is making use of two concepts, the elimination method and the equivalency system. We have learned these two concepts before. Let me have a quick review with you right now. For elimination, it's one of the two ways to solve a system of linear equations. Let me give you an example. If you have a system of linear equations like this, x plus 2y equal to 4, and then you have another one, x plus y equal to 3. By elimination, we try to get rid of one of these variables so that we can solve for another one. In this simple one, we can just do the subtraction, then we can eliminate x, because x minus x equal to 0, x, and 2y minus y we got one my left then we find y equal to one based on y equal to one we can substitute back and then we know x equal to two the equivalent system if we have say an equation x plus y equal to three the equivalent system means when we multiply anything on the left and using the same factor on the right for example we use two two it looks like we have a different equation but they are the same line. That's what we call equivalent system. That means x plus y equal to 3 is equal to 2x plus 2y equal to 6. Before we can use a matrix to solve a system of three variables, we have to know first how to represent a linear system of three variables with matrix. Let me show you with an example. So in this case, we have this system of three linear equation 2x plus 3y minus z equal to 6 minus x minus y minus z equal to 9 and x plus y plus 6 equal to 0 this is a system of three linear equations but we change to a format of a 3 by 4 matrix because this is a 3 by 4 because we have three rows 1 2 3 three rows and four columns that's what we call three by four so one column two three and four they forget one line right here this line represents equals so in other words look at that we just use the coefficient right here two three without any coefficient we have one here so this is minus one and then six so we use matrix by taking all these coefficient of the linear system to a matrix format like this 3 and minus 1 and the last one is 6 and we are doing the same thing for the next two remember without any coefficient here we have 1 1 1 so there are negative 1 negative 1 here and negative 1 here that's why you have negative 1 negative 1 and negative 1 same thing for this the last one which is 1 1 and 6 and 0 we put down 1 1 6 0 right here here's another example the only difference compared to the last example is in this system in the second equation look we don't have any y values so when you do the matrix even though there has no value for the coefficient of the variable y we still have to put a 0 right here because you can still write plus 0 y same here without the z right here you still can put zero z and that's why you have to put a zero right here in the matrix now that we have learned how to represent a linear system of three equations with the matrix format we can also do the reverse by converting the matrix back to a system of three linear equation for example if you have a matrix format like that you can always turn this back to a regular linear system of three equations in this case we can just have one x right here 
zero y zero z and then we have zero one zero and then zero zero one pay good attention to this really special matrix look at that if we simplify this whole thing we mean x equal to six and y equal to negative three and z equal to five in other words if we can come up with a matrix like this we have basically solved the whole linear equation system because we find what x y z are so we can write down the solution for this system is 6 negative 3 and 5 quick summary the target of doing matrix is to convert a matrix into this particular format which you have 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 because once we have a format of matrix like this we know what x is what y is and what z is and this is the ultimate goal of doing the matrix before we start working on a matrix problem let me review with you some important basic concepts of row operations first switching rows even though when we start off doing matrix problem we assign some row number so it's easier for us to keep track of the rows but it doesn't mean these rows always stay in the first row sometimes if we want to make it easier for us to do some operations we may need to switch in the rows for example in this case for row 2 we switch become row 1 it doesn't really matter second multiplying a row by constant remember this is the concept of the equivalent system that we just reviewed at the beginning of this unit. What it means is, when you multiply by a constant, for example, in this case, when you multiply by a constant of 2, you have to do it for the whole rows. So you have 2 times 2 for the first one right here, and then you have 2 times negative 1 for the second coefficient right here, and the last one right here as well. So right now, you have a new row which is 4, negative 2 and 6 but remember even though we have some different numbers for the new rows it is the same as the first one according to the equivalency system concept now let me walk you through all the steps involved in solving a system of equations by using matrix remember our ultimate goal of solving a system of equation using matrix is to get to this format because once we get to this format, whatever the value here is representing the value of x, here is representing the value of y, and here is representing the value of z. And if we have this format, we solve the system of equations already. So step one, we have to try to get this zero first by elimination. And then the next zero we're going to get is this one, which is that one and the next zero we will get is this one and then we use division to get the first one right here so once we get to this step we basically find the value of z already or whatever value you have right here and then the next zero you're gonna get is this one then we're gonna get the one right here by division again this is the step right here so once you get to this step you solve for y already for whatever value here it represents the value of y so once you get all these you don't need to do matrix anymore because you plug in the value of z and the value of y in any equation you still can solve for the value of x say this time I put a square right here and we're done. In the following slide, I'm going to show you an example so you know exactly what you're supposed to do. I put the step and the example side by side so it makes it easier for you to see it. So, of course, the first step we just change this whole system of linear equations into a matrix format. So, we just put all these coefficients down here to make it a matrix format. So, I name it row 1, row 2, and row 3. My target is to first get this zero so what I did is because I find out 
the coefficient of the third row and the coefficient of the first row are the same except the signs is different I use additions so that means 2 plus negative 2 so that's why I write down row 3 plus row 1 so this whole row plus the row 1 you end up getting a new row right here and at the same time I get a 0 the next step is to get a 0 right here for now I get 5 so my goal is to change this one to 0 what I did here is I try to eliminate this one so I can get a 0 how do I do that I just multiply this by 5 and then multiply this row by 2 and then I can have a 10 coefficient here and a 10 coefficient there and I just subtract them then I can get a 0 so this is the elimination so by multiply by 2 I got this one because 2 times 5 remember we have times the whole row here so 2 times 5 is 10 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 2 times 3 is 4 2 times 15 30 and when I multiply row 1 by 5 I do the same thing so 5 times 2 I got 10 5 times 3 I got 15 5 times negative 4 I got negative 20 5 times negative 5 I got negative 25 the next things I do a subtraction because 10 and 10 are having the same sign so I use subtraction to get rid of it does it matter whether I do R1 the row 1 minus row 2 or row 2 minus row 1 it doesn't matter so 10 minus 10 I got 0 negative 2 minus 15 I got negative 17 pay attention to this one 4 minus minus 20 that means 4 plus 20 that's why I got 24 now the second step is done because I got a 0 right here our next step is to get this 0 based on the two new equation we got right here I still got this row 2 row 3 we can just multiply row 3 by 17 and then at row 2 by adding these two I can eliminate the variable here and make this become 0 please always remember when you multiply by 17 you have to do the whole row in this case 17 times 0 you get 0 and 17 times 1 you get 17 17 times negative 1 you get negative 17 and 17 times negative 2 you get negative 34 so all we do is we just add them because they have different sign 0 at 0 we still got 0 right here and negative 17 plus 17 you got our third 0 right here 24 plus minus 17 we got 7 and 55 plus minus 34 we got 21 right here our step 4 is try to get one right here this is our first one since we got this one from the last operations we got 0, 0, 007 and 21 all we need to do we just have to divide the whole row by 7 then we got our first one because 0 divided by 7 is 0 and 0 divided by 7 is 0 and 7 divided by 7 we got our first one right here and 21 divided by 7 we got 3 so in other words we solve for z already the value of z is equal to 3 our next step is to get this 0 so this time we make use of the last two new equation that we have the reason we want to make use of that because this one is easy to work with you have 0 0 and 1 and the other one you have 1 0 already so that's why we try to make use of these two new equations to get this 0 so what we're gonna do is multiply the row 3 by 24 the reason I multiply by 24 is because I want to make it the same 
and then I do subtraction and can I can eliminate this one so all you need to do just times row 3 which is this one by 24 you got this because 24 times 0 you still got 0 24 times this 0 you still got 0 but 24 times 1 you got 24 24 times 3 you got 72 so we got the new equation again right here the next things I'm just doing the row 3 minus row 2. So this is row 3, a new row 3, and then row 2. So this one minus this one. So when I do this operation, 0 minus 0, we got 0 right here. And then 0 minus minus 17, we got 17 right here. In 24 minus 24 of course we got 0 the last one we get is 72 minus 55 that's why we have 17 here now we got this 0 once we got this 0 we can get 1 easily by divide this whole row by 17 0 divided by 17 I got 0 17 divided by 17 I got 1 of course 0 divided by 17 I got 0 17 divided by 17, I got one right here. So far, we have got these two done. So right now, we try to make this 1, 0, and 0. Then we're done. So what I did here, again, I make use of this row. I call it row 3 again. The reason is because we got two zeros. Whenever you have a row with two zeros, it's the best one that you're going to make use of. So what I did here is I multiply row 3 by 4. So if you multiply this row 3 by 4, you end up getting 0, 0, 4, and 12. The reason I do time, I do multiplication of 4 is because I want to make 0 for this one. Since both of them are 4, I can just do addition right here, and then I can make this 0. So after you have this new row 3, plus this R1, the row 1, you end up getting 2, 3, 0. Because 4 plus negative 4, you got 0. And then 0 plus 3, of course, you got 3, 0 plus 2. You got two. So now I got a new one right here now. So the next things I'm gonna do is to make this three a zero. Now I make use of row two right here by multiply it with three. So I got zero three zero. This is another new row two. So right now row one. 2, 3, 0, minus this row, and then we have 2, 0, 0, 4. Because 2 minus 0, we got 2. 3 minus 3, we got 0. 0, of course, minus 0, you got 0 right here. So the last step, because they got 0, 0, 2, all I need to do is divide the whole row by 2. So I end up 1, 0, 0, 2. Then, if you take a look of the whole thing, we're done because we have this 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1 format in matrix. So we solve this system by using matrix. And the solution has to be written down as an order triple like this. 2, 1, 3, where x equals 2, 2 y equal to 1 and c equal to 3. As you can see, there's a lot of steps to make use of matrix to solve a system of three equations. So in the next video clip, I'm going to show you how to use graphing calculator to solve a system of equations using matrix. Before we entering the coefficients of all the variables of the system of equation, we have to edit the format of the matrix that we want to use first. So we have to do second matrix and we select the active feature 
and then we use the matrix A enter so this time we use 3 by 4 so 3 4 hit enter now you can enter the coefficients 2 enter 3 enter 1 enter 13 enter 5 enter negative 2 enter negative 4 enter 7 enter 4 enter 5 enter 3 enter and 25 enter done now you hit second mode or quit to tell the calculator you're done entering I can always check if I enter the data correctly by doing second matrix hit enter hit enter then I see the whole matrix that I just enter if everything looks good then I hit second matrix now I have to move the cursor to math go down scroll down to R R E F then hit enter and then set second matrix bring back a matrix by hitting enter make sure you hit the parenthesis to close it then you hit enter you got the solutions right there x equal to 3 y equal to 2 and z equal to 1 